Appreciate you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. You and I have the privilege, and it's been going for ages, that we could pray, Heavenly Father, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. I greet you this morning with the wonderful name of Jesus, and I, and I bring a word to you that's part of our series on renewing of the mind. And um, it's, it's a real privilege for me to share this word with you this morning. Um, to, to take us beyond um, our mundane lives, our normal thinking, and to bring us to a place where, where, where the Holy Spirit can really build something in us that has incredible effect on this planet. And He wants to use you. The wonderful thing is God wants to include all of us. And, and I call uh, my message this morning, Church Beyond Sunday. Church Beyond Sunday. And I have a picture of five loaves and two fishes because that's where we're going to park this morning. Matthew 4.16. Will you read with me in your Bible? Matthew 4.16. When evening came, the disciples came to him and said to him, This is a remote and a barren place. All the people had gathered. Jesus traveled uh, by boat and, 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 and the disciples with him. And they came to a, a place where it looked like Jesus wanted to do a, a solitary place, a place of meditation and teaching. But the throngs, the people heard that he was there. And so they gathered. And so now the Lord is speaking to the disciples. When evening came, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote and a barren place. The day is over. Send the throngs away into the villages to buy food for themselves. It's time for them to go to spar and get their own food. Jesus said, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. The picture is changing from Jesus providing everything or everybody having to look after himself to a place where he's saying, I'm going to include you in this miracle. You give them something to eat. They said to him, Lord, we have nothing. There's a little boy with five loaves and two fishes. And look at the crowd. It said in, in, in some of the scriptures, there were 5,000 men. They said to him, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, bring them here to me. Bring the, the five loaves and the two fishes to me. And immediately, the stage is set for a huge, big miracle that will touch our lives even in 2021. Let me backtrack a moment. You see, Christianity has been described the greatest indoor spectator sport. For what do we do? We gather in buildings, and we've been doing that for 2,000 years. We gather in buildings where somebody has to stand on a stage or on a podium and perform while we are watching from the outside. The greatest indoor spectator sport. You see, in the Old Covenant... It is true. It was a spectator sport. Moses went up to the mountain alone. The people said, you go and hear God. We're scared of him. Joshua, he said in one place, myself and my family, we will serve the Lord. You can choose what gods you want to serve, but must, as for me and my house. Samson, the miracle worker, the power man, they watched him. They watched David. Kill Goliath. It's a spectator sport. And when Jesus came initially, it looked like it's going to be the same. It's just going to be a perpetuation of this old theme. Initially, he healed sick. He, he walked on the water. Uh, he multiplied things. Um, and they were watching from the outside. Have things changed? Are we back? No. Here's the good news this morning. A transformation takes place. The, the, the disciples, initially spectators, are now included. And, and there's one miracle scene. There's, there's one act of Jesus that's recorded in all four. It's the only act that's recorded in all four of the Gospels. Matthew 14, 13 to 21. Mark 6, 31 to 44. Luke 9, 12 to 17, and John 6, 1 to 14. And it's the miracle of the multiplying of the bread. 
the key to this passage. Matthew 14, 16. You give them something to eat. Lord, let them go away. We just want to be quiet by ourselves. We build a fire. We have some, some uh, uh, bright flakes. But Lord, you, you cannot include them in tonight's party. And Jesus said, you give them something to eat. It's like, I have an expectation that you're going to be up to the task. And ministry is like this. Matthew 28, 19, just before Jesus left, he said to his disciples, he says, I'm going to be with my father. He says, but you go out and make disciples of all men. You, you teach them to come into the fold and, and, and you are my hands and my feet. You are my tongue and, 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 and you are the miracle workers that I leave behind. Luke chapter 10, 19, he sent them out uh, in Luke chapter 10, here from verse 15, he sends out 72. And Luke 19, he says, you will trample on serpents. You will trample on scorpions. In other words, I have shown you what this kingdom is all about. Now it's time for you to manifest it. You see, I call my point number two, the dawning of a new day. E-M-I. EMI is not the name of a record company. M EMI stands for every member involved. Includes you. Includes me. You see, when we talk about Holy Spirit, in the old covenant where everything was a spectator sport, if we could call it that, the, the reality was that the Spirit came upon Moses. The Spirit came upon Joshua. The Spirit came upon Elijah, uh, Elisha. But in the new covenant, the spirit comes on the inside. You see, Jesus is baptized in Matthew chapter three. In Matthew chapter four, verse one, in, uh, remember when Jesus comes out of the baptismal water, the, the Holy Spirit symbolically as a dove settles on his shoulder. And we think now is the time for Jesus. He's now going to build church. No. Chapter 4 verse 1 explains to us and, 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 and pictures for us that Jesus now, being led by the Spirit from within, enters into the desert region. He's going to be visited by Satan because Jesus defeated him on the cross. But this is the preamble to it. Jesus want, wanted to show Satan that his days are over. He days, his days of ruling men, his days of controlling actions are over. So now Jesus, as a picture of mankind, is led by the Spirit in the, into the wilderness. And here the devil will meet with him and, and, and try and test him. You see, the Holy Spirit from within, I call it an inside job. And John 14, 16 and 17, Jesus it's one of his final sermons to the, to the brothers. And he says to them, he says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will send my spirit to you and he will be with you. Wow. With each one of you. But here's the, here's the new covenant blessing. He will be in you. In other words, we will not have the spirit come upon us for a specific job. We will have the spirit indwelling us permanently. Holy Spirit in me is not a pool. Holy Spirit in me is a fountain, a bubbly, living, flowing fountain. And that was what Jesus had in mind. EMI, every member involved, the key to being involved, the key to, being, to bearing fruit, the key to resembling Jesus on this earth is that there's a, there's a flow of life from within. Holy Spirit permanently in me, EMI. Point number three, heaven and I in synergy. You see, Holy Spirit comes in me. Holy Spirit is in heaven because God is almighty. And so there's a synergy taking place. I learn, and this is the stance I take. I learn through obedience, through trust, through surrendering myself, my will, to flow in synergy with heaven. The prerequisite for this is death to self. I cannot maintain the life where I was boss, 
He has a surrender. He has a yielding. He has a flow together with heaven, a death to self. Now, here's the, here's the point. Resurrection flows or follows after death. Resurrection, re, the resurrection of Jesus could not take place. The coming upon him of the Spirit and the coming upon the Spirit in my life cannot take place before I've died to myself. Resurrection will follow death. No death, no resurrection. We as a church struggle with that. Oh, we love these super duper pastors. But now is a time where there's an expectation. You and I flowing in synergy with heaven. Point number four. The instruction to heal the sick that Jesus gave to the disciples and that he's permanently giving to us. The instruction to heal the sick sounds as if we're the ones doing it. And we're very quick to say, but I can't heal anybody. It's the Lord doing it. But listen to this. In Romans 12 verse 2, Paul urges the church. He urges the believers. He says, renew your thinking. Get into a new level of thinking. Replace the old pictures. And that's what we've been talking about. The old pictures you have of yourself. The old pictures you have of Jesus. The old pictures you have of church. Replace them with battleground pictures of the reality of the kingdom here and now. Now this is what I'm saying. Renewed thinking leads to renewed living. Think about that for a moment. Renewed living in my house, renewed living in my street, renewed living in my city. In Mark 4, Jesus is in the boat. He's asleep. He has an expectation. He has taught them some miraculous things. And he goes and, and, and rests and sleeps because there's an expectation. There's an expectation in God's heart this morning for you and for me, beloved. He loves us so much. He, he, he makes things so real that there's an expectation in heaven that you and I will take our place. When they say to him, Lord, uh, we could have drowned. They could, the storm could have wiped us out and he calmed the storm. The words from his mouth, don't you have any faith in you? They still didn't understand that he was training them to take over, to represent him on earth. You see, we oppose and overcome the issues of life in our union with Him. You and I need to understand that. Let me give you a little story and then we're done. Point number five, EMI in Pretoria. Every member involved. This is 1984. Pat and I are pastors in the Hatfield saga, the wonderful church that got raised up to touch this country, to touch the world. And we are the youngest pastors on the team. Now, the, the, the point was that every pastor got an, an area that he had to oversee. And so I became the pastor, the shepherd of an area the, uh, um, that was uh, had, uh, Rittendale, Rivera, Gesina, Valeria. We call it Villa Area. That was my area of consultation and shepherding, I had to overlook and shepherd the people in this area. Now, if you remember the names that I mentioned, in those days, 1984, those people were basically the older people in the community. So here am I, the youngest pastor, I'm like 29, 30 years old, and I get given the flock of the older people. So Pat and I prayed about it, and uh, we had a vision for young people. And so God spoke to us over a period of a few days as, as we were praying and fasting. And he said, why don't you import young people from the Sunnyside area into your community? Lord, how will we do that? And the Lord said, you start discipleship. So I went to the, to the church board and I said, I would like a house bigger than my needs, my family's needs. I need a house and I wanted to include some rooms for disciples. I want to take three to four people into my house. I will pay the difference into the budget. So um, we imported, uh, we, uh, yeah, our house became a training center and we imported three people to come and live with us. Three young people from Sunnyside. One was a student and the other two just finished their studies. Just before this, in 1983, 
1982 actually, Willie Crew, Gerard Hay and myself went to the USA and to Europe to study street evangelism, to study how do you accomplish reaching an unreached people, people that don't go to church, people that sit at home. So we had all these plans, but, but you know, as long as a plan stay in your mind, it's only a plan and it's a dream. But we had to put the stuff in action. One of the things that happened during this period, our lives were touched by a man by the name of Larry Tomzak from Chicago. So we went to visit with him and we learned from him. And so Pat and I asked Zigrid, Walter and Richard to come and stay in our home. After six months of training and discipleship, remember we had three little girls at this stage. After six months, we got rent homes for each one of them, which we call households. So Zigrid took a household, Richard took a household, Walter took a household. Now, and into these households, they would invite some of their friends from the Sunnyside area. And this is how we depopulated Sunnyside and how we populated uh, Hesina, uh, Villa area, uh, Ritendal, Rivera with young people. Every Monday night, we would come together in one of the houses and we would be doing training in neighborhood evangelism. We would equip them how to reach their neighbors. Remember when, when you live in an in a, in a established area and suddenly there's a house with five or six young guys, you are asking questions. So we, on Monday nights, got together and we did feedback. And so this grew to three for five households. And during this time, we had evangelism taking place. We had many people getting saved. We had, uh, we had healings. We had miracles taking place in, ho in homes. This was a time of exuberance. Every one of us, EMI, every member involved, experienced something of the kingdom life that Jesus ushered in when he came to visit and called 12 men to himself. I close. Are you ready for a lifestyle change? Yeah, but pastor, I'm working so many hours a day. Yeah, but pastor, I've got children. Are you ready for a lifestyle change? Come and pray with me. I want to ask you to, to reassess your life and to present your life and ask the Lord to do something for us. Come pray with me. Holy Spirit, you are the one that raise up ministries. You are the one who destroy the works of the devil through us. My Lord, it is my cry this morning to cooperate with you, to synergize with you, to allow you from within me not to have good church services, but to make me an accomplished disciple, one that exhibits the life of Jesus in the streets. I ask that of you in Jesus' name. Thank you, my Father. Amen. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You.